On March 22nd, 2023, I tweeted out that I honestly don't know how I feel about the news, where Yoji Fujitsu is taking over as the producer of Final Fantasy XI, replacing Akahora uh, Matsui. And I apologize for butchering any of those names, but at its core, this news really hit me pretty daggum hard. And I've actually avoided making this video for a little bit, but I was asked, as uh, you know, you guys are always just the best and you're very curious about my thoughts on certain things. So, you know, I follow this up that I'm still processing the news about Final Fantasy XI. I honestly don't know how to feel. I feel most uh, kind of a mix of both overwhelming frustration and a little bit of freedom, yet I strive to find the hope in these words. And then I linked to the article itself in Skydolf says, hey, when are we going to see a video? And so I just kind of decided that, yeah, now I think is an appropriate uh, time. I'm a software developer, software engineer, and for the longest time, I've held out this level of hope that we would see Square Enix do something with Final Fantasy XI. I think that, and kind of the TLDR of what the new producer is talking about is reducing staff, reducing staff, letting them go work on other projects. The software dev in me says that's the absolute right call. Like, I sympathize greatly with his leadership and his choices. But the fan in me, I feel like, you know, the Frost of Mini Wheats commercial, like the, you know, the adult in me is like, yes, this makes absolute sense. The kid in me is like, what are y'all doing? The hope is always that I've had is that they would have a Final Fantasy 11 14 kind of combined sub, combined team. The reality from a technical and deliverable perspective is that is an unimaginable amount of work. Uh, it's a lot of money and it's also very risky. And I'm certain that after the failed original temp of final fantasy 11 uh sorry final fantasy 14 excuse me that they're probably very hesitant on taking any big risks as a company as a whole outside of final fantasy 14 seems like they are really struggling as of late and maybe this is a whole extra video of reasons why not just square but also other uh companies especially in Japan, have been struggling with in-game development, but focusing in on Final Fantasy XI, this was my first, this was my first MMORPG. I remember I tell the story all the time that I was a warrior, aka the tank. I had no concept of what a tank was, and I was confused why they wanted me to get hit by the mob. And I was like, no, I don't, like, I don't get hit. I don't want to die. Um, and it was just kind of funny to kind of step into this world uh, so many times, over and over again for years such good memories i got my wife actually when we were dating wasn't a gamer and she decided that she wanted to join me in final Fantasy 11 and we played that for a while as well the hope has been that square enix would remaster the game remake the game do something beautiful with the game because i think it's a beautiful game and i think it can very well complement final Fantasy 14. the hope from a software developer and you know just kind of management of it all would be to have one team from a technical engineering and things like that same engine that is working on both Final Fantasy 14 and 11. Now, obviously the team would be bigger, but from a reasons why you want your, your guys to work on new technology is if like, if you feel stuck as a developer, you'll find something interesting. Part of the fun of doing what I do is solving the problems that are online and for the client and X, Y, and Z. You're part investigator, part puzzle solver, part engineer, and all of these things combined can be very satisfying, but getting stuck in a piece of software for decades, you miss out and you, there's a lot of opportunity costs that you can miss out on. Unless you're like right on the verge of retirement, like no one's gonna wanna sit down and, and be like a, you know, kind of a one trick pony and not able to then get other jobs. Imagine missing out internally on projects that you would love to work on a part of the fun of game development. Why somebody would go into game development over just general business development is the fun of gaming. You make generally less money. You have the, uh, the opportunity to rise and get bonuses, but generally speaking, it's more practical to be, you know, a, a, a versatile software engineer than a gaming focused one, but that we can always like, there are exceptions. <laughs> there are exceptions. I don't want to dissuade anybody who wants to go into a career of game making. I would absolutely encourage you to chase after those dreams. But in this case, like the dream for me was always that they were going to announce that they're going to be on 
the same kind of platform and engine so that tools and things that they would work on for 14 could benefit not necessarily be in the game but they could benefit 11 and vice versa 11 say hey we want to build this feature we're a sandbox mmorpg and here's this that and the other thing all of a sudden you can see that also start to benefit final fantasy 14 and maybe that's still on the table and that's where i'm trying to find the hope the title of the thumbnail the the like what is the silver lining here but the practical lining all the signs continue to point that this isn't their focus this isn't their vision this isn't their dream and then it falls down into kind of a category of well maybe this is for the best a it kind of frees me from this perpetual hope this constant seeking of any sign every time yoshi p talks about final fantasy 11 it really does frustrate me because it doesn't ever seem overwhelmingly positive about that game you know and like he praises a lot of the old school but 11 doesn't ever come into play and that for me always has rubbed me the wrong way but i i, I respect yoshi p for what he's done and i'm very excited for final fantasy 16 but final fantasy 16 also now has for me a lot more pressure not that you have to put that much pressure on it but it just makes 16 a much more pressure filled game and it's already going in with a couple of strikes with its exclusivity ps5 like if it was ps5 pc on launch just like they did for spoken i think i could definitely i i, I would be like all right nothing really to complain here at least you have an option but i don't have that option and so final fantasy 16 has a little bit of a strike against it and then you know that is what it is but focusing it on 11 this news really hasn't been good for me i honestly think and i was talking to my wife i was like i just feel like the, i'm just in this kind of a bummer of a mood ever since that announcement and you know this is maybe just me just kind of processing it maybe this is just me grieving this game and and yes people have you made the case that things have changed the things have changed you know in the game and it's not the same game and like i i, I would argue that if they were ever to remake remaster 11 there would have to be concessions that we as players would have to make but this kind of news the kind of downscaling uh, the idea that they're going to go work on other things and bring ideas back the only way they could really bring ideas back into 11 is if it was on a different engine 11 is stock and the only like and that's where i think from a dollars to donuts they just haven't got the approval to do it and maybe they don't have the the want to do it that's the other factor it's in in project management you you think of things time money and resources do you have the time do you have the money and do you have the people to get the job done i think there's a fourth pillar when it comes to gaming do you have the passion because you can tell people to go make a game but if you don't have the passion if they don't want to make it it's not going to be the thing that you really want it to be to resonate with so there's always that all right so let me kind of shift a little bit of focus in on some other thoughts that have been shared online about this uh fusion x if you guys don't follow him uh ruffle dragoon that's where he gets his name from out of his 11 out of his 14 gamerscape great uh great guy absolutely would highlight you to go and give him a follow over on twitter this is what he has to say about it he says i have a few thoughts to share about the takeover of final Fantasy 11. they told us before that they only had six planners and no dedicated engineers or qa for the team downscaling that makes if you feel like it can count the new final Fantasy 11 dev team on just one hand fujitsu wants employees to further their careers absolutely i agree with that the other projects instead of being locked into an old game like 11. okay sure that makes sense saying that they can bring lessons back to 11 how and with what budget i that's a hundred percent i echo that a hundred percent um after the rap surgeon story is done it sounds like 11 could easily be going back into the same maintenance mode that it did after rap cities maybe with even less or smaller updates than before at the end of the day it feels like vr could be the last hurrah with square enix wanting to do an absolute bare minimum to keep the game making money i hope i'm wrong and that they do something to surprise us but the message today doesn't do anything to persuade me otherwise i don't know if vr would be it that's just for me i've I want VR to be cool. I, I struggle with it. It just makes me nauseous. And that's a bummer. You know, <laughs> maybe my kids will be much better at it. Maybe we'll be. Maybe there, maybe there's hope. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. 
And then finally, also things as a side note, as the Vanadale Project is still a dedicated forum space on the official forums. Does anybody remember that? It seems like, you know, so many failed projects from Square Enix. So many failed projects from Square Enix as of late. That's why I'm really rooting for 16. I really hope 16's good. And I really don't want to see this. Oh, it didn't sell what we thought it would sell. Expectations BS, especially with its exclusivity. Interestingly enough, its exclusivity has hit like the Senate floor in other related news. It's not related to this video, but if you're still here hanging out with me, I just thank you so very much. To kind of send you off on, a, you know, a note, a positive note. It's like there are so many really great games. There's so many really great games on the horizon and right now. I'm really excited to learn more about Throne of Liberty. Blue Protocols right around the horizon. New World's never been better, in my opinion. And with an expansion this year, I'm even more excited than ever. Uh, there's Wayfinder, which I'm under NDA and can't talk about. Uh, you know, like All of a sudden, we can just start listing off just a wide range of games. Like There's really good things to play. And I think that's the, the other thing, is that in terms of competition, in terms of the space, in terms of what is available, you know, there's so many cool things. Pack Stay, Ashes of Creation, things that are maybe a little bit further out that when you start to think about it, like if you're going to remake it, if you're going to remaster it, like what's your plan? What's How's it going to compete in this new space? Do you build it on the 14 engine? Do you build it on Unreal? Or do you like, you know, maybe it'd be kind of neat to see if they would let it go and let, you know, I don't know, the fans kind of take over, which they have for Horizon XI, you know, which is a great, honestly, great service all things considered you know but anyway i wish you all the best thank you so much for hanging out with me on this video hopefully you enjoy your weekend i'm gonna go play some diablo and do some of that stuff this weekend as well so uh hopefully we'll talk soon but until then guys take care